Who else has been to India? Whereabouts were you? A beautiful. Love the palaces. Namaste. Who else? Anybody been to India other than those two? No. It's a fascinating country. Come on up. Love your hair, brother. See, he could go through a wind tunnel and nothing would move his hair. Like, it's even his 78th hair is like perfectly gel. It looks like he was driving a convertible car and he just put his head out and it just gels that way. We get started in two minutes, right? Yeah, perfect. You're good? Timing is good? Very good. Hold up. <clears throat> awesome. Shall we? Yeah, we're ready to go. I'm ready to go. Please. All right, so uh, we're about to get started on our next demo. Um, this man needs no introduction. Um, he's the master of masala, <laughs> the king of the curry. <laughs> He's the infamous Sir Vikram Vidge. Oh, pleasure. <laughs> so Thank everybody you. knows Vikram. Thank you. Uh, we're very honored that he's here doing a demo with us. Um, Vikram, before we get started, I think we need to get a glass of wine in your hands. Absolutely. And we should bring something that's local and that's beautiful that comes from our backyard. Oh my God, a Pinot Gris. Doesn't go well, better than that. Well, namaste everybody. Namaste. Does anybody know what namaste means? Namaste means I honor you and you honor me. And our entire universe is right here. So let's just say namaste to everybody. Namaste. 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 Pleasure. Cheers, uh, Vikram. Cheers, brother. Oh, there. Okay. Cheers, 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 cheers. Um, you know, I have got uh, my friend and chef Tarun here with me, and he's going to assist me in, in, in cooking the food. He's going to stir the pot, and I'm going to just put some spices in it. <laughs> My journey started in 1994 and the idea was to bring awareness to a cuisine and a culture of the country that I had left behind. I mean, look at us today where we are and where we've gathered. Uh, you know, we are from Philippines and we are from Syria and we are from uh, uh, different parts of the world, from China and India and different parts of the world. And here we are in this beautiful place called Vancouver and this democracy called Canada. And this is our backyard. And how beautiful is that? So as Canadians, we should be so proud of where we live and so proud of what we have because we do live in one of the best democracies in the world where none of us have to change. None of us have to change. I don't need to change my nose ring and my toe ring and my piercings in different places. I can be who I am. And that is a beautiful part of the country. I had the honor last year to cook for our troops um, on a ship. And I'm telling you this honestly, uh, the fact that we are standing here roaming freely and enjoying the spot run festival is because those troops are protecting our democracy. And without them, we wouldn't be here. So when I left the ship, I said to them, what would you like me to take back to the Canadians? And they all said, don't forget about us. So let's take a moment and say thank you to this freedom, because that's all we want, and the choice of being here. Without them, we wouldn't be enjoying all this beautiful spot run festival. Um, again, I'm going to start with the masala. Masala is what? Well, who knows what a masala? Who cooks Indian food here? <laughs> who cooks Indian? You do? Who roasts their own spices and grinds their own spices? You do? You have way too much time on your hands, brother. <laughs> you do? Are you retired? <laughs> so, uh, masala starts with onions, ginger, garlic. That's the starting point of any cooking. Put it up a little bit. Then, once you brown the onions, then you would add a little bit of a little garlic to it and a little ginger, right? Now, this constitutes a masala in the sense of roasting of onions, ginger, garlic is the starting point of every Indian cooking. A little bit of cumin seeds just to give it a little flavor and I'm going to add a little bit of red crushed chilies. Now, anybody has ever had a faux pas with Indian food? Anybody has made curry and they said, oh my God, this is terrible. 
No? Come on, then you should open up an Indian restaurant. <laughs> because I make those mistakes every day. Sometimes I look at it and like, oh my God, this tastes so bad. I can't believe it. Even I can't eat it. So sometimes it happens because cooking is not meant to be an exact science. Cooking is meant to be today, this is what I feel like doing. It's like playing music. You pick up a guitar and you start playing your tunes and you enjoy it. It doesn't have to be exact. It depends how hammered you are <laughs> sitting on the floor. <laughs> so, onions, ginger, garlic with a little bit of cumin seeds and some red chilies. Always add whole spices to your curries first and then add ground spices to it. Anybody know why? Because whole spices take a little longer to cook and that's what you need to cook down and then you add tomatoes to it. Always add tomatoes that are fully and beautifully ripe. And I tell you why, because you're gonna cook the hell out of them in the curry anyway. So why buy these beautiful, expensive Roma tomatoes that are so expensive? I'll tell you one day I uh, went to um, a really uh, high-end shop called Whole Foods. <laughs> and I went there and I saw these tomatoes. And these tomatoes were slightly bruised. And I don't know why, suddenly my Indianness came out of me. <laughs> and I went to the lady and said, excuse me, I would like to buy these tomatoes for 10% less. <laughs> and she's like, no, we don't do things like this. And I'm like, call the manager. So the manager comes over, she looks at me and she says, you're Vikram Vich. I said, but that is not the point. <laughs> The point is that these tomatoes are bruised and you're going to throw them in the garbage and I don't want to throw them in the garbage. She finally, after 15 minutes of haggling like a typical Indian, gave it back to me for the 10% off. Not because I was not happy that I saved a dollar twenty. It's because I haggled with Whole Foods and I got away with it. That's the fun part. So buy the tomatoes, you know, brown the onions a little bit. You guys can see how onions are brown. Again, the French chefs will be like, oh, lightly just saute them, like just like translucent. We Indians are like a little bit like we're in your face. Like brown the hell out of them <laughs> until you've cooked it down. So we're gonna brown the onions, ginger, garlic with cumin seeds, deglaze them with tomatoes, and then add your spices to it. Protein always goes right at the end in our cooking, and it's because the protein, we always cook with the bones in. And that's the key to our cooking. Right? Perfect. So, you're using the water and the acidity to, of the tomatoes to deglaze them. What do the French chefs use? They use either stock or they'll use whipping cream to tone that down. Now, I'm going to add the spices to it. A little bit of red chilies. little bit of garam masala. Anybody knows what garam masala is? What's garam masala? <laughs> yes, garam means hot and masala means spices. Now when you come back from skiing, you know you have mulled wine. What are the spices in mulled wine? Cinnamon, nutmeg, Yes. Awesome. So these are all spices that produce heat. So when you come back from skiing. So that's exactly what is in the garam masala. Garam means hot, masala means spices. There's a reason why countries that are near the equator, they eat spicy foods. Because they need to sweat. And when you sweat, see this breeze that you're feeling? If the breeze is blowing, your body is sweating. And when you sweat, you cool yourself down. That's why countries that are away from the equator, Germany, Scandinavia, they eat spices that stay, they, they eat things that they, that retain heat because they need to be warm, right? Whereas countries like India, Singapore, Malaysia, all these countries eat spicier foods near because they need to sweat and that's why. So this forms a masala. Now you can take this masala and keep it in the fridge for almost a month and nothing would happen. It's like making a delicious tomato sauce. So you can make it beforehand. You don't need to do this every day. Onions, ginger, garlic, it's too much. 
You can just do it one day, put it in the fridge, keep it, pull it out, and then sometimes add coconut milk to it, sometimes add whipping cream to it, sometimes add sour cream to it, vegetables. So it's basically like a delicious tomato sauce or uh, a stock that the French use. Style of cooking is all over the place. And that's the key to Indian spices. So Vikram, I got a quick question for you. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Spices, how do people at home go about buying spices? Because freshness of spices are important. The stuff you buy out of the little jars in the grocery store, they're not very good. What do you recommend we do? So this is exactly what we do. A stainless steel container that is closed like that. It's dark. Don't keep it above your fridge, uh, above your stove like this. Keep it away in a dark spot. And that's what you need to do. So the, the smell stays in there, it's dark, and then these are the kind of containers that you buy. They're like stainless steel containers, right? Again, it's like coffee. Coffee never stops being coffee, right? Coffee's always good. It just sometimes, if you've been sitting on the coffee for a long time, it doesn't have that same freshness. The roasting process goes away. So cumin will always be cumin. It doesn't change itself. It just is different if you leave it on for a long time. But to be honest with you, make it and have, have the masala made like this and that's the best way to enjoy it. Okay, so now what are we going to do? We're going to take the, we made the masala there, right? And I'm going to put the prawns in there. Now, how beautiful is this? that we're having real live prawns coming out from the ocean. And I'm telling you this again, we in Canada should be proud of it because we have an ocean that produces great sustainable seafood. We have farmers that produce great produce. And then we have a wine region that produces great wines. What else do you need to become a great culinary destination? We are a culinary destination. We should be very proud of it. And I'm telling you this, if we as Canadians are not proud of our own backyard, nobody else will be. We need to be proud of it. We need to understand that, wow, this is great. So Vikram, do you remember the first time you had a spot prime? Well, um, we started, I think uh, probably 10 years ago. Uh, it was me, Robert Clark, and we came down and with Steve, and he had the uh, Ocean Wise, and then he was like, okay, let's start this spot, spot Prawn Festival. And we were like, okay. And then I remember this long station, and we just stood there, and just the prawns came in, and we just had some curries, and we made some food, and, and we enjoyed it. I mean, look how beautiful it is, and a testament that you guys are all here sustain, you know, supporting not only us as chefs, but also su supporting the ocean and the sustainability behind it. So, almost there, and then what's the last thing you would add? You add salt to it at the end. Sea salt? Just a little bit. Well, I use kosher salt, but this is obviously like a sea salt that you do. And, and why do you add the salt right at the end? Let me know why. Because salt is something that pulls the juices out of. So if you put salt beforehand, it remove it, it takes out the water. And so if you put it right at the end, the last part is just, it kind of just deglazes that, that moisture that's left over in there and it cooks it through and through. Finish that off with a little bit of coconut milk. I notice you're cooking with the shells on. Okay, so great point. Why would you cook with the shells on? Now again, French chefs, you know what they would do? They would remove the heads off. They would uh, take take the heads off. They'll make a little like a, a fish stock on the side. They'll sell you the prawns for like $40. <laughs> and then they'll sell you the stock for another $10. Like, oh my God. Indians are slightly cheap that way. <laughs> we love to cook with the with the shell on and then you can enjoy it because all the flavors of the, the meat, like if you're making a bisque or something like that, is right there. So think about it. This could be a coconut bisque and a delicious. And that's the important part. So there you are. We have, you know, we've, we've kind of cooked it down and, uh, and serve it. Uh, this is something that you can do you can do it on the backyard, you can do it beforehand, you can make this masala, you can put chicken in there, you can put white fish in there, you can put, um, you know, the lamb, the dark meats are the only things that you might need to cook a little bit more in it, and that's where the flavors come from. 
So there, that's what it is. So can anybody tell me what's in the garam masala? Which ones? Say, come on up. Come on up. We're going to get to taste this. <laughs> Up. Why why do countries near the equator eat spicy foods? Come on up. You're gonna get to taste it. There you go. Go ahead. Just let it cool off a little bit. Come on up. Yes. It was the black salt. So it was just it's basically like a rose. I had some rose pebbles and I had some rock salt and I just chopped it up very fine. And I, it gave a little bit of an aroma to it. So it's like a it's like a regular salt, sea salt, and I put some rose pebbles in it. Okay, so it's not. Get your hands there, you can wash your hands No, no, no. The, but there is a salt like that that comes from uh, from northern India called the black salt. Oh, yeah? And it has got hydrogen sulfide smell to it. it smells like eggs. Oh, okay. And that's where the flavor comes from. No. And it comes from the caves of India. Really? Yeah. Is there a traditional dish in India which this is sort of based on? Oh, great. So um, in Goa, traditionally, that's where the seafood comes yeah. from. Okay. So Goa, uh, being a Goan uh, dish, that's where they, they make these uh, prawns, yeah. deep fried prawns. Uh, deep fried fish and it is actually a Goan dish that comes from the coastal region. So North India predominantly uses yogurt and whipping cream. South India uses coconut milk and everything that's coconut based because of the water and the and the um, and use of uh, coconut because the South India has a lot of coconut. So how, how are the prawns? prawns? Have you tasted them? Lovely. Oh so good. He's you know, never had a we ha since life. we have a token Indian with us, we must <laughs> let him taste it. Come Jiren's got to get up here. Absolutely. <laughs> Eat it. How was it? Oh my god, I love the fact that they use their hands. Absolutely. The, the best part is, once they eat that curry, their, their, their hands are going to be completely <laughs> yellow for two days. <laughs> Only, only, I only eat on one condition. Wash your hands yes, sir. I need an overwhelming wow for Alex yes. and Vikram. Oh, thank you. Oh, pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. Pleasure. Oh, thank you. Pleasure, pleasure. And Vikram. Hello, hello. Giving up their pleasure. time. Oh, my honor. Coming up. Bronze. <laughs> you want some too? Yeah, I'm going to eat Why not? Absolutely. Taste that. How are they? The salt was okay? Spice? Yeah? Spice is good? Excellent. Wow, it's delicious. They're good? Masala is good? Excellent. A total honor for you guys to come up there. Thank you so much for coming and supporting us and being part of this great, great tradition of squat prawns because it's people like you that make us proud of being us being chefs and what we do for a living. It's the, you know, again, I, I always say, it's you who support us. It's you who are the big stars of it. We're just humble cooks, and that's what's important. And put your passion on it. Thank you so much again. Okay. Thank you so much, Thank you. 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 Thank you.